And in alcohol, there are two types of bonds that can give you absorptions. The HO bond gives you this type of absorption that we already used in the last problem, above in the 3200 to 3600 range in broad. And the oxygen-carbon bond gives you an absorption in this region. So if we had an alcohol, we would expect to see both of these absorptions. That's right. So notice that this is the absorption between an oxygen and a carbon, basically. This is a carbon-oxygen absorption, which means it could come either from an ether or from an alcohol. But we don't have the other diagnostic for an alcohol, which is an absorption in this region. This is one of the most useful absorptions to memorize, 3200 to 3650 broad, to figure out whether you have an alcohol or not. So are we done with 37? Yeah. So the correct answer was the second molecule? Wait, when would we get, we would get two peaks if this was an alcohol? If this was an alcohol, you would have one peak broad in this region, and you would have the peak that we, also, that we already saw here in the 1000 to 1260 region. So the alcohol gives two absorptions, one from the OH bond and one from the oxygen carbon bond. Oh, looks like you worked that out well. Well, in order to do this problem, you had to have a lot of absorptions memorized. I don't know, do you have to have all the ones memorized that you would have to see on the homework? If so, so. okay. Well, anyway, these are all the different absorptions that we've had to use so far for the homework. By the way, notice that when I wrote these, I don't just write the functional group, I point to the bond that's absorbing. Because after all, I can't just say that alcohols absorb here because only one of the bonds in the alcohol absorbs here. The OH bond absorbs here. Whereas in an alcohol, the oxygen-carbon bond absorbs here. So you have to pay attention not just to the functional group, but to which bond in the, which of the bonds in the functional group each of the, the absorptions refers to. There's another IR question, number 36. I did that with the others. That's a harder question. You guys want to try the harder IR question? That's number 36. It takes a lot more thought. It's important to read this problem very carefully and get a clear mental picture of what's happening.
this together, or do you yeah. want to keep working? Now we have three bottles, bottles A, B, and C. We know that they have this molecule, but we don't know what the structure of the molecule is. So we're going to try to get some clues as to the structure. Now the first thing that we're doing, uh, so one thing that would be helpful here is to predict how various molecules would react here. For example, it's possible that the molecule looks like this, or it's possible that the molecule looks like this. By the way, is this primary, secondary, or tertiary? And this would be... And I saw by looking over your shoulder that you were drawing some of these patterns, so that's good. But one that you might have not thought of drawing oh, is this tertiary pattern. So are those the three? Now, there's other patterns too. Let's just stick with these for the time being. These seem to be the three important types of patterns, primary, secondary, or tertiary. Now, we don't know which of these is in which bottle. We don't know which of these is in which bottle. We're trying to figure out which of these is in which bottle. And notice, how are we doing that? We're doing that by treating the bottles with hydroxide. We're treating the bottles with hydroxide. Well, what type of mechanism do we expect to happen if we treat this primary with hydroxide? <coughs> what type of reaction? This is a good review of some of our earlier material. What type of reaction would you expect if we treated the tertiary with hydroxide? Which one? Not sure? You might, you might want to take another look at the SN2 and E2 handout that we went through. So, in fact, if you have those with you, now might be a, a good time to look at that. But anyway, the key thing is, is this a strong base or a weak base? This is a strong base. This is O full minus. If you take a look at that SN2 handout, you'll see that that puts you in the last two columns of the handout for strong bases. Do strong bases wait for carbocations to be formed, or do they just come barging in? This is not going to wait for an SN1 or an E1. It's not going to wait for the leaving group to leave. It's going to come in and make the reaction happen. So you're pretty much never going to get an SN1 or an E1 with a strong base like an O- or a N-. minus. That's something that you'll be able to see if you take a look at the, at the handout on SN2 and SN1, E1, and E2. So what are our options here? Our options are SN2 and E2. So they're going to be two. Why would we expect that this one can't do SN2? Because it's stereotypical. Right. What was the big obstacle to SN2 reactions? Steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. But remember we saw that steric hindrance was not a big obstacle to E2. So if there's a lot of steric hindrance, we expect SN2. If there's a lot of steric hindrance, we expect E2. And if there's less steric hindrance, we expect SN2. Now, how about in the secondary case? Well, this has a moderate amount of steric hindrance. So perhaps we would expect competition between both of these mechanisms, quite a bit of SN2 and E2. If you look at the handout, the handout would say that with a secondary and even a non-bulky base, the major reaction should still be E2. We would still predict the major reaction here is E2, but there could still be a lot of a minor competing reaction from SN2. So we might expect both of these. The, what they could be. I'm sorry? Let's see. Actually, it looks like these two could give you E2, and these two could give you SN2. I know, but I thought we just picked that this would be E2, not SN2. You mean in this case? Yeah. Well, what I was trying to say is that we're going to get both. <coughs> what I was trying to say is we'll get both. We might get more E2 than SN2, but we're still going to get some of both. And so when we're actually in the lab, we would expect to get a mixture of products here. Even though the major product would be E2, in, in this lab situation, we have to take into account that we're going to get some of both of these in this case.